<laughs> All right. Good Very evening. Nice. I'd like Maybe. to welcome everyone to the Thursday, May 18th, 2023 planning board meeting. Um, if we could all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Introduction to board members. To the far left, we have Paul Amatucci, Jerry Graybill, Don Ganarelli, myself, Michael LaRue, and Phil Roy. Um, we're going to open up tonight's public hearing for a site plan review, commercial storage, 1 Blackmore Road, R6818, Blackmore Road, LLC. If you guys just want to come up and just give a brief uh, description. Uh, so my name is Kevin Poulin uh, from Barry Surveying and Engineering, representing Blackmore Road, LLC. Um, the subject parcel, as previously mentioned, is uh, tax map R68, lot 18, uh, within the Rural Commercial Industrial District. Um, the parcel is a little over seven and a half acres in size. Uh, frontage is along Blackmore Road. Um, to the northwest of the parcel uh, is bordered by the Driscoll Brook, and to the southeast is bordered uh, by the railroad tracks. Um, and as some of us found out earlier, the parcel can only be accessed from South Berwick. There's no direct access uh, from Berwick. So the project proposal is to add to the existing use um, two mini storage unit buildings for a total of about 14,000 square feet. And this is in addition to the licensed medical marijuana cultivation uh, that currently takes place on site. Um, these mini storage units will be uh, 10 by 10 wide by 20 deep and on the second building which is a little bit smaller um, they'll be 10 wide by 40 deep um, this project requires two conditional use permits the first is the land use itself which is the mini storage units and then the second conditional use permit is for impact within the 75 foot stream protection district of the Driscoll Brook um, there are no waivers being requested as part of the application. So to support these many storage units, um, the applicant is proposing two infiltration basins to treat and mitigate stormwater. Um, on the eastern side of the site, um, the first infiltration basin was added in to uh, treat a little bit of the new proposed impervious surface, but uh, primarily to become in uh, conformance with Maine DEP stormwater regulations for the pre-existing uh, impervious. The site is now over one acre of total impervious, so the pre-existing now is subject to a certain uh, level of treatment as well. Uh, the second stormwater BMP uh, is an infiltration basin that treats the uh, proposed impervious surface from the traveled lane and then the uh, roofs of the storage units as well. Um, each of these, um, sorry, the second uh, stormwater practice um, that receives flow from the new uh, impervious surface is uh, there's two conveyance swales, one on either side of the traveled lane, and this brings stormwater um, to a sediment forebay for pretreatment um, and then to the infiltration uh, basin itself. Um, and other uh, utility items, uh, these are going to be uh, prefabricated steel structures. Um, so there is no water uh, required on site or an effluent disposal area as a result of that. Um, electricity utilities um, will be provided via overhead. Um, there's a series of utility poles that are on the existing site. The conditional use permit required for the disturbance within the 75 foot stream protection district is for the construction of a conveyance swale. There is no, uh, no proposed impervious surface within this 75 feet. Um, this disturbance So the uh, proposed conditional use area is just under 3,300 square feet um, and there is a proposed fill of 130 cubic yards over that 3,000 square feet which ends up being about a foot and a half of grade change over that um, existing surface um, there is a narrative contained within the application package 
that goes through all of the different um, conditions um, for each of the conditional use permit requests, the land use itself, as well as the uh, disturbance within the 75 foot stream protection. Um, the applicant, we have uh, been in contact with Maine DEP regarding the stormwater uh, permit. So we had uh, requested a pre-application meeting with DEP back in February. Um, in between the last board meeting and now, uh, we have heard back from them and they have waived the requirement for a pre-application meeting uh, due to where the project stands with the town of Berwick. Um, it's a little bit more than what they usually get on pre-application meetings. Um, so now we have uh, sent certified letters to uh, Director Butters and as well we have filed uh, in the Foster's Daily Democrat the required notifications regarding this permit and we expect to be filing the permit within the next uh, week or two. Um, to this point, we have received comment from the uh, police chief. Uh, he found no law enforcement issues uh, with the site. I can provide a copy of that letter. Uh, that's not something that uh, has been received by the board. And we have also received comment uh, from the fire department. Um, the fire chief is in agreement with the proposed traveled lane widths uh, for truck circulation around the proposed storage unit structures. Mm -hmm. We are also proposing to widen the entrance to 24 feet to accommodate fire truck movements as well. And the only request from the fire chief was to add a Knox box uh, key access to the gate at the front of the site. At this time, I'd like to ask the board for comments <coughs> and questions. If I may, Mr. Chair. Um, how about we just wait for the public comments, we'll, okay. and then in old business, we'll ask our questions. Very good. All right. Thank you. All right. So if there's anyone in the public that would like to make any comments, just stand up and state your name and address and your comments. <coughs> no? Okay. I will close the public hearing. Um, moving along is going to be approval of minutes for May 4th, 2023. We were all here. I yes, was no, not. So you I were not. So one, two. Okay, so we can still do it. Yeah. 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 Make a motion. We approve them as written. I'll okay. second that. All right. Further discussion. All in favor? All right. I will abstain. All right. We have one abstaining. Okay. Moving on to old business. Site plan review. Commercial storage. One Blackmore Road. R68 Law 18 Blackmore Road LLC. <laughs> <laughs> familiar. <laughs> uh, so I guess um, now, if we have questions, yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I have. Uh, you said that there is there's no road access from the town of Berwick. It's all South Berwick. That is correct. So, uh, is South Berwick involved in this in any way? Has there been any? Uh, notification of them that they're going to have traffic on um, other on than existing roads um, other than the coordination with the fire department with the South Berwick Water District um, there has not been other coordination with South Berwick okay hmm. so are you are you planning to widen the entrance to 24 feet is that correct that is correct okay what is it currently uh, I believe it's about yeah about 20 20 okay Good, Mr. Chair. Yep. Uh, my my comments echo uh, Mr. Amatucci's. My concern is, uh, it's great that you got letters of approval from our police department and our fire department, but if the only access is from South Berwick, um, it, it might be reasonable to ascertain that it would be South Berwick that would be responding to either a police call or a fire call to that property. Is that a reasonable expectation, or am I mistaken? I Usually it's mutual aid. If, if it is, no, I, it's would we be within rights to, uh, we're, we have a lot of joint projects going on with South Berwick right now, and just being good neighbors, I think it would be in your best interest to, to seek that from their public responders as well. Yeah. Um, even though it is mutual aid, I, I just think that's being good neighbors, and they've been nice enough to include us on a lot of their projects and give us a chop on it. Um, the other question I have is, is that road a state road, town road, or private road? It's a private road. It's a private road. Yep. Okay. The access going to it is a private road. Yep. It is. Okay. It is. Okay. okay. If you guys speak up, okay. you got to speak in front of the oh, mic. It's just for the people that are listening. <laughs> sure. Um, Hannah, what are your thoughts on this? 
Well, I know we looked at this a little bit when the project first came about, um, and we determined that it was not necessary to work with South Berwick, but I don't, and I will double check on this to make sure we don't cross any boundaries, but I don't think there's an issue with it that okay. the board would like to have them weigh in, but it wasn't a requirement as yeah. far as like the other joint projects right. you're doing. If, if they have no comment, then I, I think we at least give them the opportunity to say no comment, but they have been nice enough to afford us the opportunity to, to have a chop on projects that abut our town mm -hmm. line, I, I just feel like it's good business for us to do the same. Yeah, uh, I will double check and follow up with the applicant if there is an issue with that. But yeah. I, I think I don't think there would. I, I think, think there is. I mean, it's a storage, so it shouldn't mm -hmm. add that many trips yeah. to that. To that. And area. I, I think the reason that um, it wasn't this was not made a joint project like the others is although Blackmore Road is a private road that it is entirely in the town of Berwick. <coughs> yeah. Although you have to go on South Berwick Roads to get to yes. Blackmore Road. I see. Yeah, but yeah the okay. property yeah. itself. The okay. entire okay. the entire parcel is yeah. in yeah. Berwick. There yeah. is okay. no That's there is I no was, overlap. Yeah. That's yeah. Okay. Okay. I was waiting. I was waiting for good time to interject that there's no there's no overlap between where they're going to have any say in the actual project i do agree mm -hmm. that checking with their first responders for mutual aid just in case there's something else that they feel it wouldn't hurt the project that's for sure and it would certainly behoove the applicant to make sure that that's all safety bases are covered yeah. um that having been said it's not really something that the the Berwick Planning Board would really have anything to wait. Yeah. The South Berwick yeah. Planning Board would have anything also, to Also, you know, live, I live actually on the property line. Okay. My property line is the South Berwick line. So I'm in Berwick. My neighbor's in South Berwick and uh, Jerry as well. I actually, know. Jerry mm -hmm. split the baby here. But uh, <laughs> so uh, we know that when there's a fire or police call, it South could be Berwick. South Berwick responding yeah. to us mm -hmm. as opposed to and that's, so I think it's a good idea. That's why I said checking with the first responders may may be beneficial to everybody. It's certainly not going to hurt yeah. anything, but and yeah. certainly to your customers. I mean, if you got people that have stuff in storage there and you have a fire, <laughs> it's yeah. good to know that somebody's going <laughs> right. to be there in a timely yeah. manner. And if they're more timely than our our services, that, that makes the best sense for everyone. Along with what he said, you know, Berwick requiring a knock box, South Berwick should know that that that's there mm -hmm. as well. Yes. That's so true. That yeah, yeah. That's more for point. awareness for right. their yeah. fire yeah. department. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Okay. I don't see an issue with that. Great. Very good. Thank you. So, w w one other question: We're we're terming this commercial storage. So, is is that like open to the general public, or is it businesses that are storing there? Um, if you don't mind, I may ask uh, Mr. Roblart here to answer the question okay. about I, the I actual just don't users. Know the, the terminology and the distinction between commercial storage and just mini storage so my name is Christopher Berry I'm the president of Berry surveying and engineering with Kevin here tonight so mini storage uh, is a commercial use it's kind of why we phrased it commercial mini storage mm -hmm. in our application um, this is primarily for individuals to utilize for personal uh, storage uh, they're sized as such so this is that's different than uh, contractor storage or contractor bays, as most Got of it. us probably know that. Right. Uh, this is for because they are our large units. Uh, uh, they are. To, that's right. You know, other units. If, if, if those on the sidewalk uh, may have noticed, we did a project in South Berwick, right on the other side of the, the town line, the tracks. Um, there's a number of residential units that have been built there. There's more to come, and Mr. Robillard is uh, trying to capitalize on uh, the fact that they may need to store uh, their belongings somewhere. So that's right. the that's the proposed yeah. use. Okay, thank you. Yep. Thank you. I'll just add that that's just how this ordinance specifically calls it's self storage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's just what our ordinance calls it. It's commercial mini storage, but right. it is what you think of as self storage. Right. So is there, is there something for us to do tonight here? Uh, yeah, the actions. Uh, At this point, no. Um, we're still waiting. Uh, on engineering comments as far as we wanted to get a, a seal of approval as far as the the encroachment in the shoreland zone um, and it's for that stormwater stuff uh, we're still waiting on that um, other than that I think if no problems arise we should be good for approval at our next meeting okay good thanks Al. is that a condition for the partnering town EMS or is that just good idea club are um, we conditioning that or are we I wouldn't condition it okay. especially right. since it's not a requirement just um, being good neighbors say. okay 
Yeah, I so like that's it. something that they can do in the next couple cool. of weeks till we come back. Okay. Awesome. Kevin, Thank you, you. Kevin, uh, excuse me, you don't have any problem with uh, talking to South Berwick at all, do you? Nope. Okay. No, and I'd have to imagine uh, that there was probably some level of coordination between the Berwick and South Berwick Fire Department to yeah, have, let think. us know that there's a hydrant available nearby. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I don't. That won't probably will not be a will not be an issue. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right, um, Mr. Chairman. Yes, because we're. Sorry. You guys speak. Yes, yes. thank you. Uh, so we customarily work in New Hampshire. We do a few projects in Maine. D does the board need to uh, continue this to a certain date, or how does that process work? Hannah, do you wanna? Okay, great question. Um, I don't think there's a formal continuance. I think we just you've closed the public hearing. We've heard the application tonight, and it will come back at the next. The next meeting, meeting when yeah. we have all the material we need. Okay. So I don't think there's a formal action at this point. All right, great. And uh, Hannah, you mentioned this has gone out for third party engineering review? Yes, it was. Uh, who did that go to? Um, it hasn't gone out yet. Oh. Uh, so I will let you know okay. when I set it up. And who does it go to typically? Um, the last project that we've done, I think we've done a little bit of transition as far as who we work for engineering with here. Uh, but the last project that we're current, currently reviewing went to civil consultants. Okay, Jay Stevens. So yes, civil. I would, yeah. that's our first go. <laughs> okay, is hopefully with him. So if you, if uh, if you need anything from us digitally to send to Jay, just feel free to ask. Great. Okay. Happy to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank did you. you, Mr. Barry? Did you guys submit a digital copy of this? Yes, ma'am. Originally, okay. So then, and they've not made any changes since. Uh, no, I don't believe so. Okay, no. then, you, then yeah. we don't need any updated submittals. Okay. Thank no, also, you. just to clarify a little bit, uh, typically the next time that we're here together and you're on the agenda, I think we we move to find uh, the application complete, meaning all the pieces are in there. So I think that's what that. the next Yeah, the application days. is yeah. complete. We will be accepting the conditional uses. Yes. Yes. Yeah, the application was found complete at the last meeting. Okay. Um, we had to find the application complete to schedule the site walk in the public hearing. Yep. Got it. So all we right. did that. Yep. So at the next okay, meeting so we can approve it, approve it. Yes. Right. Yes. Right. We'll, we'll be approving or denying the <laughs> conditional use permits. All right, great. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy your night. All right. You no new business. I'll open up the public comment for non-agenda items. Yeah, let's go for a Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, man. Thank you. Okay. Um, seeing no one else, step forward for. Oh yeah. Uh, sure. Just if you guys could come up to the podium, just state your name and your address. Yeah. Yeah, my name is Keith Hurry. Uh, 136 Rochester Street, Palm Um I represent Rathbone Lodge, Knights of Pythias. And I'm here to request from the planning board if I could get a zone change, because right now currently it's uh, commercial industrial. Just want to change it to village overlay, since we have bought the, the old tannery building, the land of that. And the only reason why we want more zoning is to possibly put multiple apartments upstairs. We have a, like a 20, uh, 40 by 60 all open up top. So all we need is just the zoning change. Okay. I'll say we. I've received his email uh, requesting it and passed it along to James. Um, it's in James's hands at this point, to my knowledge. Okay. Um, okay. So we will date accordingly. I guess I don't. Okay. I, I'm not super familiar with Berwick specific yeah, process for the, I know, the overlay. So, so. I, I don't know if it'll be going in this vote, but it might be going. It, it might have to go to the next vote in November. Um, but typically, this has been like a once a year we keep updating this zoning. Mm -hmm. So um, the voting card's already yeah out yeah. as yeah, of it's yesterday. Already, yeah, so. it's too late to get on this mm -hmm. one, but it's possible that we can get it on the next one. Um, that being said, that if there's anyone else watching and listening, <laughs> if you want to get into the village overlay and you are an abutting neighbor, you might want to step in with him. So there can actually be some movement on this because that helps. The more people that want to get involved in this, the better. But um, 
Yep. Before you dismiss him from the podium, could I get your name again, sir? Because Keith Hurd. Keith Hurd. Thank you. H U R D. Thank you. Do you mind repeating your address, sir? One thirty six Rochester Street. Thank you. Seven. All right. We're just trying to make sure we have it written down for a few minutes. Okay. I will forward you. Okay. Yes. Thank you, sir. I have sent it only to James. Yeah, you did. Thank you. Thank you. You too, Keith. You do the same. All right. Next, moving on to informational items. Well, um, <laughs> first of all, I know I'm chopped liver now, and you all met Terry, but officially, Terry Wilson, the uh, the new administrative assistant to planning and code. Oh my God! Sounds that's a, great. That's a very angry noise. I think that's the time to go home. I don't know. <laughs> I'm going up there, but you need to stop. Just saying. Um, so that, that just want to make sure you guys met Terry. Um, we do need to put. Um, do we want to put it to them when they want to put that on the on the agenda? Which one? Worcester. I guess. Um, I I'll have my list in front of me of everything we have. When? Think. Okay. Well, I guess I just want to warn you guys. We have like six or eight projects going right now, and uh, another one or two coming in. And so, what we're going to be looking at is potentially a couple of kind of heavy meetings. And Good. I apologize for that, but mm -hmm. we'll. Let you know as soon as we can and put it in your phones the 15th 15th first the first we have a site walk the for first we have the site walk for worcester road right sure and they might be on and the agenda there too and yes that's we have a lot of site that walks is correct coming. one next to the dump too the, the oh, Berwick, Berwick, Berwick iron and metal Berwick iron and metal you guys opted to not do the site oh, okay yeah, that's right just the public, public hearing, hearing is that night okay. no site, and site walk for worcester road on the okay. first yes and i think the only thing that was james was up in the air about whether or not he could put worcester on for the first is because you will not be here and he didn't know if lj would be able to attend at okay. least via Zoom. Lee J will, I believe, be here on the first because that's, I think, when he's coming in for the to discuss the zoning change amendments. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, so for the, what are they called? The land use ordinance. The standards. Yeah. The performance yeah. standards. Yeah. 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 Um, I think that's when he's coming in. Oh, so nice. if that is the case, then yes. Okay. So okay. would you guys be comfortable with that? Do the site walk in the hearing for Worcester and do the hearing for Berwick Iron, and we've got a couple of others. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we'll be here on the when you say six to eight projects, there. Irish, do you mean six to eight subdivisions or six to eight just just general projects? General projects. Yeah. Okay. Not all subdivisions. Okay. Okay. But okay. No, I'm not trying to give we you have more. Been very busy on subdivisions. Yeah. 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 I believe <laughs> we have what, two to three subdivisions probably currently. Yeah. yeah. We have Worcester Road. We have. Woodland. Woodland Pond. We have. We have Does that the one? Uh, that was that subdivision that came in today? Oh yeah, sure. I think so. Yes. Oh. Yeah. So, so two to three like subdivisions. So how's your how's your <laughs> workload? And, and I and I ask that not joking. I'm asking that honestly. Like, are um, you are you overly task saturated because of that level of work? Not that she has me now. Okay. Yeah. Right? Yes. I, was <laughs> I mean, say, I'm helping her a lot. If you to ask, <laughs> if you to ask me that last week, I would have. The week before last, I worked 52 hours on the clock, mm -hmm. and that was not all that I worked. That was just what I put on the clock. Okay. Um, well, the re the reason I week, ask the reason I ask is just if there's six to eight large projects coming forth, and and you know, given your current workload plus that, I know in the past, you know, when we get that many applicants at one time, I know in the past they have kind of turned the switch off and said, we're going to hold off on issuing any more permits. Yeah, are we at I, are we at capacity or are we still able to accept new projects? It is my intention and hope and belief that uh, yes, I'll freely admit I'm going to work this weekend too. Okay, um, James and I had discussed this. It, he knew there was still going to be a little overlap between the time Terry started and the time that I didn't have to do weekends because um, I was told this was four days on, three days off, but that math hasn't worked out so far. Um, <laughs> But I think because of all the help that Terry has given me this week and, you know, because of her experiences previous to her employment here, um, very little transition. This, the planning board stuff is really more planning board and procedural. She knows everything else. Um, that by the end of this weekend, I should be pretty much caught up and I can spend next week finishing getting caught up on violations and phone calls and emails and then smooth sailing. 
I just think so. it's important for us as a board, and, and especially for our paid employees in the town, um, we need to identify what that demand signal looks like if it gets to the point that you are so administratively task saturated that I we that we know. flip that switch and and not be afraid to say hey we're going to pump the brakes a little bit until we get a handle on what we've got you know what i mean i appreciate that i yep. appreciate knowing that's even an option i don't think i've ever been in a position <laughs> i can honestly say i've never worked in a position we've where done it we've done it before in this town and that's yeah. the only reason i bring it up and i know I, I, I hear the townspeople when they say, wow, too many subdivisions, and, and hey, it's an authorized use. However, we only have so many public servants that work in this town, and if the capacity is such that you are not able to provide the best quality service for the current applicants, I think that's a pretty darn good demand signal to, to flip that switch. So I just want to make sure that that is something that's on the table and it's something that we consider as, as a board. I greatly appreciate that, and to be quite honest, I've been here almost six months. It's been um, the first month wasn't too bad. The last four and a half have been pretty rough because I had no real, I had no help. And I was so don't be afraid to pop a flare. I, I <laughs> yeah. will, now that I know that that's even an option, I will do that if needed. But I really feel confident. And um, the other thing is, Terry, I don't know how much uh, introduction you've all received beforehand, but since we're, we're live and the public can hear this and see this. Um, Terry comes to us from, she actually worked in the, the same office I worked in previously. Uh, she was very experienced with a very high volume code enforcement and planning office. Um, and prior to that, she actually has in the past owned her own construction company. So she has a, it wasn't in the state of Maine though, so she's got to get caught up with the Maine codes. Um, but because she has the same type of general background I have, she is going to at some point, once she's settled in and has really settled into her planning stuff, she's going to start getting certified for code enforcement. Great, nice. So that will, you know, it, it's beginning to look more like Terry and I will be sharing all of our responsibilities fairly equally. Nice. Great. Um, she'll be primary point for planning with Hannah, mm -hmm. and I'll be primary point for our contractors and homeowners for um, code enforcement and inspections, but, you know, she can take applications and review them for completeness as soon as they come through the door, and she has been doing that this week, which is how I've been able to get caught up, Great. which is a service I didn't have before. When she gets her LPI, she'll be able to take and issue those plumbing permits without whether or not I'm here. Mm -hmm. And then eventually, hopefully within the next year, year and a half, she'll be certified code, and then she can help. I mean, I could even could even take a day off and things wouldn't melt down and it would be amazing because last week I was out sick on Monday and then I had to go with Christy Ravasco on Tuesday, spend most of the day doing MS4 stuff, um, which is another thing I could mention to you. But uh, So by Wednesday, I was ready to rip my hair out because they, people didn't have access to me Monday or Tuesday. Mm -hmm. And so by Wednesday, everybody was clamoring and it was just chaotic. Um, but this is something that Christy Ravasco had pointed out to me because I, I found it much more interesting than, I'm really such a nerd, but I found it much more interesting than I think she expected, um, <laughs> that, you know, there's an option that later on once, uh, my winter projects, man, I got like five years of winter projects, it's ridiculous, um, I could get more training in the MS4 area once, once Terry is certified and can take some of the workload, I get more training in the MS4 area start taking over our MS4 stuff and we can actually decrease our contract with Christy because I'm a lot cheaper than she is mm -hmm. and cut that contract down significantly, still provide the town with the stormwater services they're required to still have her at our, at our assistance. Um, and that's something that I'm interested in looking to do to save the taxpayers a few, few bucks. So, um, but no, I, I genuinely, you have no idea how much I appreciate that, but I have, I told James I feel like I have lost 100 pounds this week because the stress is so relieved already. Right. Good deal. It's insane how much better I feel about coming to work this week. But um, And I don't think I really have anything anything else for you guys. Great. Um, oh, can I ask a question of the board that hopefully somebody with some historical knowledge will have? Did the Was it the board that put into place the um, rebuilding permits if you're on well and septic for subdivisions? 
or is that an ordinance that was enacted through some other means? I'd have to do some research on that yeah, one. I don't know. The, before all of our yeah. time. The, like growth? The growth. The growth limitation provision. I don't know. I've had questions about that too. I'm confused, <laughs> but I'm going to be very transparent. I know growth is uncomfortable for people, and I know we need to recognize that and be careful with it. Um, walking into it from places that worked completely differently. Um, I find it confusing that we will allow unlimited building permits in a project that is on town water and sewer, which is actually more taxing to our resources. I, I think the reasoning why because is of where because it's located. of the location. Anything outside of town, we want to keep that rural look. And I so understand that, that, but I I'm think that's <coughs> why it's there. I and it's I understand that. It's been there that. for a while because it's through the comp plan. That was the whole oh. idea of, of limiting growth in the R three area. I'm just I, it perplexes me because as we go and we do these site walks, I don't know if any of you guys have thought thought this way at all, but I'm just want to express to the board how I feel about it because I'm curious about where that. I mean, I understand that keeps it by, by location, but limiting to three a year. I mean, we've got projects with eight or 11. Mm -hmm. As a homeowner living, when we're walking through these developments and we're looking at these additional developments going in, if I have to choose between losing one summer or three or five summers to concrete trucks and hammering and all the chaos and dust and confusion mm -hmm. that construction brings, um, I want it done and over with so next summer I can enjoy myself. Mm -hmm. And I, I kind of worry about, I understand that growth provision. I guess I was just looking for a little guidance from the board if you all had any as to why that, uh, why the arbitrary number, what have you, or, or if anybody gave any thought to the impact of making these longer term because then the other issue is they put in their top, you know, they put in their bottom coat so that they can get all their utilities and such in and get their trucks in and out. But they're not going to top coat these roads until it's all until done. it's all done. And by mm -hmm. the time they get around to top coating, that base layer is beat Shot. all to yep. dog doo doo. Mm -hmm. And so they're top coating over this, which is not giving us a really quality, stable paving. Mm -hmm. um, you, you prompted another interesting thought in, in bringing up the water in the sewer district. And I, I guess my question would be, and, and I've, if this already exists, do we have an impact statement from them in what future capacity? they have available because I, I know it's an issue for I, I hear the voters loud and clear and I hear the townspeople and and the water quality issues we've had as of late it begs a question if we can't keep up with the water quality for the current amount of residents that we have is that a demand signal that we should probably be pumping the brakes if we can't provide water to the the, the folks we have at a, at a reasonable amount of quality and quantity mm -hmm. um, should we request a letter from the water district and what they have as additional capacity and what is their threshold where, where, where is their stop gap and their demand signal to say we can't we can't provide any more water because this is where we're at and and the same goes for the sewer district because i don't think at least in my time on the planning board i have not seen that and i know we keep approving these approving these and every time one comes before we go to the water district and the sewer district and we're like, hey guys, what do you think? So piece by piece, they're like, well, what's a little more? What's a little more? Would it be reasonable to ask them to commit to a, what is your end state? How much water can you provide? How much capacity do you have for sewer? I don't think that's a bad idea at all. I really think we should get ahead of the curveball and do that. I think we need a five-year plan from them personally. Mm -hmm. right. He's I got something. Jerry's, Jerry's over there. I got maybe a little information. You're setting in on the comp plan. Yes. I think James has some information on that that they're working on because I listen to my wife when she's doing the comp plan <laughs> stuff, and I think he's looked into that. So there may be yeah. something out there okay. we don't know about. It's, but it I, I think it'd be of great value to me. Yeah, right. it's definitely yeah. come up in the comp planning process. Right. I don't remember enough about it specifically to have right. chimed in to give information, but it is definitely something that has come up. Mm -hmm. um, because they were looking at school district size, you know, yep. how many. Right. They're looking at the water and the sewer. Mm -hmm. I schools is I think another big one, right? James may be able to come and tell us what yeah. he We're, has. we're okay. actually quite okay in the schools. Uh, right. We're actually within three or four people of three or four students of what we were in 1990. Um, that chart back there, <laughs> I couldn't tell you. Um, so, a school district I know is still fine. 
Uh, right. Water I can't speak to. I actually did just go meet with Jay um, because I mm -hmm. wanted to, he's over at the sewer district. Um, one of the things that we're trying to do is put together in-house a developer, by the way, hi Hannah. Uh, hi. We're putting together a developer's package that will have things like street opening forms, uh, you know, road opening forms, culvert forms, uh, street sign things that we want to be able to give people at the front side mm -hmm. so that we're not getting these calls that I still haven't gotten my street sign, how are we doing this, mm -hmm. or, you know, we want them to have everything that they're going to need up front. And as part of that, I went and I met with Jay, and I did do my first actual official tour of the uh, sewer district. And I got to tell you, what's got going on over there is, uh, in the in the terms of the kids, hella cool. Um, They're number one in the number two business. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, but they they put the tanks that were there from when Prime Tanning was there mm -hmm. to very very good use. I didn't know they were using bugs to break down septage, but that's kind of cool too. But I can't. Try Googling them, Jay, if you're watching. Still I want to see the bugs. Kind of bug. We want to know what kind of bugs they're using in their little soup. But um, <laughs> they're actually, he's actually looking into setting up the other two. He's got two tanks over here set up, um, and he's looking at setting up the other two in this uh, five part process. So they, I, I think they have the, they actually have the storage capacity to handle that. Mm -hmm. um, and it would be good to get them on the record for, for what, what their they, capacity is. For what exactly is. they can do. Because yeah. that, that helps us. I mean, yeah. I, I don't want to set our developers and, and future endeavors in our town up for failure if we don't have the capacity and infrastructure to support them. And I think that's something that would be very valuable for the planning board. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Also, uh, I I just had me talking to a developer a couple of weeks ago who's uh, putting a big project in, and he is saying, "Why is it that unlike other towns like South Berwick, we don't drill for water here?" He said, "There's so much water Under underground ground. here, mm -hmm. and South Berwick is so successful mm -hmm. in getting water, and we're right next to it. Uh, we're not drilling. Uh, we." Get it. Uh, get through Salmon Falls from the river predominantly, yep. yeah. and uh, and have to, you know, it's cost prohibitive to get that water from the river, it, treat and it, treat and it. then get yeah. it out to our residents. Yeah. So, so yeah. you know, uh, drilling uh, may be something we ought to be asking the water department as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I will yeah. uh, toss that a lob that one in James's lap. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, Jerry. Got a couple <coughs> questions to go with what you were saying, Parish, about you got six or eight things coming. Does that include South Berwick and North Berwick yes. projects? Yes, it does. Do you okay. know what's going on with the North Berwick project? We were there. No, week. I don't. We can't really talk about it. No. Nope. But I know that um, there's issues. Well, and I'm thinking uh, they have their own issues. They they submitted. They did submit. Uh, David Springer submitted a package here too, but I didn't know if we were still going to stick with joint yeah, or if we wanted yeah. to. Uh, okay. We are, we are, all, all of we are in dangerous joint. territory discussing yeah. that, I think, yeah. Yeah. With, with this many people. I just don't want us to overstep. Yeah. Well, no, I was yeah. just inquiring of Hannah if that's something that needs to be put before our board separately because they did deliver a package, which I didn't get a chance to tell her. They delivered a, a package here. It was like a submittal package, so I didn't know if we were supposed to put them on no. here. Okay. Yeah. Everything with we them would be, that meeting. We would be in the North Berwick meeting. And so then it does, it, then that. that does include those. Yeah, it was yeah. only going to be separate. Thank you, because I forgot yeah. to tell her about that. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Hannah. It's been a little chaotic last couple of weeks. Um, so no, then that, that then since we're doing that jointly, it does include it does include yeah. those two meetings. Well, when we hear from them, we will update the board as far as the project uh, process or the okay. yeah. progress. Here's I guess. Your package. Uh, I got a bigger package than that. Uh, Not a word, Don. Oh, <laughs> All right, any other but information? Hopefully, um, <laughs> hopefully the communication will improve greatly yeah. with keeping you guys informed of everything and getting you everything in a timely manner. It's yeah. my goal. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. We have a running <laughs> list of all the upcoming projects, mm -hmm. and we're trying to piece them into agendas and figure That's that nice. out. So awesome. I'm going to pull it up and well, try to give you a preview. I <laughs> told you before, if you need my help, call me. Yes, Don I am retired. <laughs> he really is looking for something to do. Like special needs are not working. <laughs> 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 Whichever. <laughs>
<laughs> Leave it to the Coast Guard. Things are on the upswing. All right. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, if there are no further items for consideration this evening from the esteemed Burgess meeting room in the depths of the Berwick Town Hall, I'll make a motion to adjourn. I will second that motion. Okay. All in favor? All right. <laughs> All right. Good night. What time Thank is you, it? Sir.